two more ribs are in place. The second outer tank rib fitted to the rear spar. Keith fitting the top boom to the web of the French wing. After fitting the bottom boom, it will be turned over and the leading edge ribs will be riveted to the spar. The two large wing fuel tanks which fit between number two engine and the fuselage and number three engine in the fuselage have gone to be serviced, repaired and made airworthy. More intercostals have been fitted to the floor of the Doncaster fuselage KB976. The skin on initially and then we'll transfer the chute from Jane and then cut through the... The chute? Are they um, flare chute? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll cut, we'll cut through the skin then and put it in position when we transfer it. Yeah. Hey, you've done well there, haven't you? Got that yeah, in. it's come, come together nicely, yeah. Yeah. It's just a, a lot of fiddly bits and new brackets we made. Yes. And obviously loads of these costumes. Yeah. Okay. But um, I'm hoping by the end of the week we'll be somewhere near. Yeah. And yeah. what actually goes on top of that? Just a just um, sheet on it. Yeah. I mean, on... on the original, so, yeah. the, the usual pop rivets, which um, are okay, but obviously every time you get the floor up, you've got to drill the pop rivets out to inspect them underneath, and then it's effectively making the rivets the rivet holes just get bigger and bigger. Yeah. So I think a better way would be maybe use some sort of um, split nut or something and screw, screw it yeah. down to what, Some anchor nuts or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, anything like that, yeah. yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll see when we get there. Oh. Until that floor is complete, yeah. oh, we've, still, we've still got to take the door corners out either side to put the, 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 in, the inner ones in. Yeah. Have you made them? Yeah. Not, not yet, yeah. that should have been next week. Yeah. So once we've made them and, and they're all fitted and they're back in place, then we feel we've probably been nearly done with skin. Then we probably we might even start riveting this bottom bit up. Yeah because I think it'll be easy to rivet that up and then put the skins yeah. afterwards. And then we'll have, once that's riveted up, I mean, it's, it's solid now. I mean, I've stood on that and it's quite solid. So oh, it'll yeah, take my way, yeah, take my way. Yeah. Do that on Friday. Even just with the skin pins? Skin pins, yeah, yeah. Put yeah. A, bit, a bit of carpet down in there and sat in there to do, do some drilling and it took my way comfortably. So yeah. I think we'll get, sort of get a bit of riveting. Yeah. They'd be ready for uh, November when they oh, swap God. them over. It's easily, yeah. 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 Bill, today I'm, I'm manufacturing a new skin. Uh, this goes down on the um, starboard side of the aircraft, just below the access to the carafe. So now I'm manufacturing a new skin, and um, all you do is you use the old skin as a template. Uh, I've picked up some of these holes, as you can see. I've shaped it along the top edge. I've left a bit on the um, bit on the bottom edge that I'll trim off once it's all matched up to the aircraft. And so um, now the next stage is set that whole skin aside uh, and then offer this up to the aircraft. Will you have to bend it or will it? No, it's actually you can see. Uh, Good question. Uh, you can see that there's a radius, a, a, a small radius here, but because it's actually 32 thousandths of an inch thick, it's quite thin. So um, we'll go the wrong way up. Yeah, this goes just here, just below the door. It's the third skin of this part. It is the third skin, that's right. Yeah. There's, because of the door I mentioned previously, we've got the doors reinforced with a triple skin because of a large cutout. This, will be, this is the last piece of skin, the external skin, that will go on here.
The new intercostals were made by Keith earlier this year. Dave's got on with the floor quite well. And Phil's will be completing this today, I should say. Hi. Not talking to you, I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> Hi, I got a comment from Joseph Skilling on one of my last restoration videos and he said is it possible to get some close-up video of the knee joint on NX611 that extends behind the main gear. Yes it is Joseph and I got Phil as he was passing and he took her to the Lancaster and we went through. I've got Phil with me, can't you talk us through it? This knuckle here that's yeah. the one, yes. Well, that there is obviously the main undercarriage stay. Yeah. You know, all aircraft undercarriages have these stays, and they obviously to give it rigidity when it's down a lot. But in order to get the undercarriage up, that there is a, it's a ground lock, so it's only fitted temporarily. But that little jack there, this is just like your arm, and it's just like your elbow. But when it goes, it moves uh, up that way to get the undercarriage up. That little jack there breaks the geometric lock, just like on your elbow. If you lock your elbow fully down and push it back on itself, it, your arm goes rigid. Yeah. Well, that's exactly the same as your elbow, but in order to break the geometric lock to get the undercarriage to retract, that unlocking jack there unlocks the geometric lock and enables that to break and then to fold, it. fold up to go up and to get the gear up. Huh. Every single aircraft, uh, flying has got an undercarriage with oleos and a stay or radius arm or different aircraft I call them different things yeah even in a even an f-18 and an f-35 have got a radius arm or a stay uh, with a geometric lock in order for the one to provide rigidity when it's on the ground but you don't need it when it's flying and it breaks to fold the gear away or the undercarriage as the British call it but the Americans call it the landing gear. Yeah. All right, thanks, All Phil. Right. No Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre has a full scale working model of the undercarriage movement. This is a full scale model of the undercarriage, so I'll press the start button and we'll record it, and then I'll take a close up of what they call the knee joint. So, this is the undercarriage of a Lancaster.
Keep your eye on the two hydraulic pistons which break and hold the geometric lock. OK, now I'm going to press the button. To start it off, I'll try and follow the knee joint all the way. I hope that's okay for you Joseph and any of other modellers who are watching this video.